around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. Can I stop now? Yeah, you can stop. We arrest men, then finish up. Oh, you, you think I done all right, Pa? You're learning, you're learning. Being a man ain't easy, especially with a maw like you had. If she was still alive, I'd sure get a cane in for this. <laughs> Women just don't understand about these things, Buford. If they had their way, man never come into his own. She sure made her way sound right and proper, though. I know, but she ain't around no more. You know, I gotta get that woman thinking out of your head. Fill it up with man thinking. Take his feet there. Help me drag him to that bitch yonder. Sure, Paul. <laughs> you ain't never put a bullet in a man, have you? No, I ain't. You're gonna get your chance now. In him? In him. Well, ain't he dead? Never take no chances, boy. I right, come on now. Just roll it down that bank. Now let's just break off some of these here branches. Why, well, I think we should bury him proper. Branches is proper enough for the likes of him. But men there like he done. You say so? Just put him in a pile, yeah. Oh, that's plenty. Here's my gun. Shoot him and throw that stuff on top of it. Where you going? Kick out that campfire. See if there's any pickings we can use. No use leaving nothing good laying around for strangers. Sure, Pa. I ain't heard no shot yet. Come on, boy, get it done. Get it, Pa. That's more like it. Now cover him up and get back here. Solitary thing around here worth two. Not even none of them pans is worth nothing. Some people just got no pride at all. Here's your gun, Pa. Buford, you're gonna be man for you know it. Now we got one more thing to do. Over here in the wagon, get in front instead of the team. Pa, not another shooting. You ain't doing it, I am. No, Pa, please. You sure ain't acting like no son of mine. Turn your back in. I just can't let you do it. Get out of the way, boy. No, Pa. <laughs> oh, uh. oh! Now look what you've done. Oh, there! Yeah. You made me spook your team. I'm sorry, Pa. I got half a mind to stomp your head. I said I was sorry, Pa. Yeah, never mind. I, I guess it don't matter too much. Yeah. You still gonna get me them boots like you promised? When we get to Dodge, you'll get your boots. If you're man enough to fill them. Yeah, nothing more we can do here. Let's get going. How about what, Chester? About waiting till sundown to start back to Dodge. Well, that makes more sense than riding in the heat of the day, doesn't it? It sure does. Yeah. Just look at that moon, will you? Mm-hmm. Uh, did, did you ever taste green cheese, Mr. Dillon? What? Green cheese. Did you ever taste it? <laughs> no, not lately. Well, what's it taste like? <laughs> well, I 
I don't know, Chester. Don't know? Well, you said not lately, so I figure you must have... Hold up a minute. What's the matter? That wagon moving along the ridge up there. Well, it's moving awful slow, but I... Chester, there's no driver. Then you're right. Must have wandered off in somebody's camp. Yeah, it could be. But only a greenhorn would set up camp and leave his team in harness. We gonna take a look? Yeah, I think we better. Come on. We'll come up on them slow so they don't take off, right? I'll get out in front of them, Mr. Dillon. Oh, 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 boy. Easy now, ho. I'll check the wagon. Chester, come here. What is it, Miss Dillon? What's the... Oh, my goodness. Got those thongs on her wrists. Yes, sir. She lied. She's still breathing. Yeah, let's raise her up a little so we can see better. Why, it's an Indian girl. Yeah. Is there anything we can do for her? Not much, I'm afraid. Not out here. we got to get her to Dodge. Well, I sure do hope Doc can save her. Well, he'll try. But I'm not too sure she'd want him to. There's no anybody who'd treat a woman like this. Well, I mean, it just ain't human. He's an animal. Yeah. When I find him, he'll get his cage. Poor little thing. I'll drive the team, Chester. You ride back here with her. Steady her as much as you can. It's a rough ride from here to Dodge. Yes, sir, it sure is. She's going to make it, huh, Doc? She'll make it. I wouldn't have given you a plug nickel for her chances when we found her. I wonder how Kitty's making out with her in there. And if she can even persuade that girl to nod her head, it'll be better than I did. Just stared. Wouldn't even look at me. Can't exactly blame her. You're a man. Yeah, I know. Oh, Kitty? Uh, she talked some. In English? Yeah. Doc, when can we move her over to my place so I can keep an eye on her? We'll see how she is in the morning, Kitty. She seems pretty weak and tired right now. I'll take her. Well, I'll check with you in the morning. Night. Night, Kitty. Night, Doc. Night, Kitty. I need a drink. Walk back to the Long Branch with me. I'll tell you about it on the way. All right. She wouldn't talk about herself, what happened to her. Only about her husband. Her husband? Yeah. Well, start from the beginning, Kitty, huh? Well, as I put it together, she and her husband were setting up camp for the night. And while he was out getting firewood, two men rode in. She offered him coffee. And that's when they... Yeah, go on. Her husband heard a scream, came running back. Tried to fight him off, and they grabbed him. She could hear them beating him. And just before she passed out, she heard a shot. Could she describe these two? No, not really. Just that they were both big men. Yeah, there's not much to go on. I know. Well, it's like Chester found a couple of drinking friends. Doesn't sound like they're exactly friends, does it? I tell you, you go on. I'll join you in a minute. Yes, sir. He ain't your son, is he? No, he ain't. But I just don't think it's right to make anybody stand there. All right, then. Stop sticking your skin in those words. Don't be wrong. Now, you look here. I All right, Chester. What's the trouble here? Oh, Mr. Dillon. Who are you? He's the marshal. That's who he is. Marshal, huh? Well, listen, Marshal. This nosy fella here... You just shut up a minute. Day. You'll get your turn. Now, what's this all about, Chester? I've been watching him for an hour, Mr. Dillon. 
He's making this young fella here drink down whiskey almost as fast as Sam can pour it. What's wrong with that? He's my son. I got the uh, right. I see. He's 26 years old, Marshal. Never had no hard liquor. Now, I well, think it's time yeah. I teach him to hold it. What is your name, mister? Wilkins. Zachary Wilkins. And this here's my boy. I'm Buford. Buford, turn loose to the bar and shake hands with Marshal. <laughs> I can't, Pa. My leg bones has went so. You're all right, and I do like I say. Well, I'll try, Pa. Howdy, Mark. Stand up, Buford. <laughs> all right, you listen to me, Wilkins. I can't tell you how to treat that boy of yours, but while you're in Dodge, I don't want to see him like this again. If I do, I'll put you both in jail just long enough to sober up, then run you out of town. Now, you get him out of here and take him someplace where he can sleep it off. You're sure high and mighty, ain't you? Come on, Buford. <laughs> Fine thing when the law tries to stop a father from making a man out of his own son. Well, I reckon it's a good thing you come in when you did, Mr. Dillon. They're pretty husky fellers. Looks like you got nothing but trouble tonight, man. Yeah, it looks that way. Sam. Yes, Miss Kitty? Set out three glasses in the bottle of rye, will you? Sure. Kitty, hmm? I've been thinking about that Indian girl's story. Now, the team couldn't have run too far from where they camped. I'm going out first chance I get tomorrow and see what I can find. You going to bring in her husband's body? Either that or bury him. Adam. What? Adam. That's what you called him. It's a strange name for an Indian. Oh, I guess I forgot to tell you, Matt. Her husband wasn't an Indian. mind people taking their time, but I should have been closed an hour ago. It's almost seven o'clock. We're paying good money for them, and we'll just look till we find the right one. Well, I showed you every boot I've got two times over. They gotta be the right ones, don't they, Buford? That's right, Paul. Well, I sure am glad you're working late, Mr. Jonas. Well, what do you want, Chester? Uh, Miss Kitty told me to buy a dress. What? It's for that little Indian girl. Oh, the one you brought into docks last night? That's right. How is she? Oh, she's doing fine. But her clothes was tore pretty bad, and Miss Kitty thought a dress would make her feel better. Well, let's see now. Uh, about how tall is she? Oh, she's just... Uh, oh, about so high. Ain't much meat on her. You say these boots cost seven sixty? That's what I said. We want them. Yeah. Well, it's about time. And you. Me? Make your marshal friend real happy. Tell him me and Buford is leaving Dodge. Well, you made me kind of happy, too. I figured that. Buford, you go on down to that stable, get our horses, bring them up in front of that Long Branch place. I'm going to have me a couple of drinks there before we go. You know, I take my new boots with me. Sure, take your boots. Now, there's a real pair of gents, huh? Yeah. Well, here, what do you think of this dress, Chester? Oh, it, oh, that'll be fine. Oh, I got a couple of others. No, that got... one's all right. Just put it in a sack. And, and Miss Kitty said to add it up to her bill. All right. Here you are. Thank you, Miss Jones. Thank you. Night. Night. Got in, Chester. Here, I'll take that dress on up to Raina. Raina? Oh, is that her name? That's what she calls herself. Now, you know that's kind of pretty. Sit down, Chester. Your friend, Zach Wilkins, just came in ahead of you. And I know. I've seen him more at Jonas's. He's leaving town. Good. Uh, did you find where uh, uh, Raina's camp was at? Yeah. But there wasn't any body. No body. No, I found a few blood stains and a ditch and a pile of branches. That's all. You reckon somebody stole it? Well, either that or Raina's not telling the truth. Well, why in the world would she lie about anything? Matt, she's not there. Huh? Raina? She's gone. You better find her, Chester. Yes, sure. Oh, she ain't well enough to be going nowhere. Why, that's oh! 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 Mr. Dillon, look. You heard. Marshal. My boy. He's been scalped. Somebody scalped you for... Yeah. Somebody scalped my boy. Just it got dark. We'll meet you at the jail. Well, I, I've got 
the bleeding stop, Matt. You want to take him to my cot in the office? No, just leave him here in the cell. Uh, Better not to move him. He was right, Pa. You was right. I couldn't shoot him, Pa. He's delirious. I was woman thinking. I missed him. I missed him on purpose. Who, Buford? Who did you miss? The camp fellow. The one in the ditch. You told me to shoot him. Buford, this camp that you're talking about. I did. Uh, Chester, did you find her? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, just south of town. Oh. It said she was going back out to camp and bury her husband. Uh, I took her to Miss Kitty. Doc, are you about through here? Uh, yes, yes, but I can handle him now. All right, if you need me, holler. Come on, Chester. Uh-huh. I want you to go get Raina and bring her back here. Huh? Did he die, Marshal? Did Buford die? No, Wilkins, he didn't. Come on, Chester. Uh, yes, sir. But he, he's going to Raina. I don't think so. His head, it was so... Yeah, I know, but he won't be the first man to live through a scalping. Marshal, I'm going to kill the dirty engine that did this. Now, what Indian would have a reason? Well, engines ain't like people. They don't need no reason. I know who it was, Marshal. It was that girl. Oh, what girl? You know that engine girl that Chester was talking about. I don't think so, Wilkins. I don't think she could have done it. She's not strong enough, but I can understand why she might want to. You ain't making sense. Two men broke into work camp last night. Big men like you, Wilkins, and Buford. Well, it wasn't us. Buford says different. That don't mean nothing. His head's hurting. I think he's telling the truth. I'm going to find a marshal, and I'm going to take care of her good. Excuse me, Dylan. Come in, Raymond. Don't be scared. You. You done it. You cut my boy. I'm going to kill you. You're not going to do anything, Wilkins. Take his gun, Chester. Raina, have you ever seen this man before? Yes, Marshal. He is one of them. She's lying. No, Marshal, he is one of them. You ain't gonna take the word of a dirty little engine over mine. You're saying that she hasn't seen you before. That's right. And you were nowhere near her camp last night? No, I wasn't. All right, I'll take your word. Now get out of here. Marshal. Open the door for Mr. Wilkins, Chester. That's more like it. Give me back my gun. But, Mr. Dillon. Marshal. Don't worry, Raina. If he's lying, Adam will take care of him. Adam. Who's Adam? It's her husband. Adam's alive, Raina. He's already cut up one Wilkins, and he's out there in the dark somewhere really looking forward to this one. Open the door, Chester. My gun, Marshal. I want it back. You say you've never seen this girl. You don't need a gun. Well, I ain't going out there unarmed, not with him looking for me. You mean this girl isn't lying? I didn't say that. What are you waiting for? Get out of here. Get out of here, or I'll throw you out. No. I don't want what Buford got. She... She's right. I I did it. Lock me up. Do what he says, Chester. Come on. Where is my husband, Marshal? I don't know, Raina, but he must be close by. If you find him, will you put him in jail, Marshal? I only cut young Wilkins pretty bad. They hurt him. Yes, I know. They meant to kill him. I'll still have to hold Adam for trial. And if he runs? I'll have to track him down. But I'll tell you one thing, Raina. What, Marshal? It'll take 12 men to convict him. And I couldn't name one in this town I think would want to. and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Vic Perrin and Harry Bartell with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, Vic Perrin, Lillian Bayef, and Ralph Moody. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke.